Alright everybody, hello and welcome as always. I am Sean, this is In The Mixer, and it's episode one of our FC Isle of Man series. I've been waiting for this one for weeks. I know you guys have been as well. It's our long-term save for Football Manager 2020, and I cannot wait to get started, so there's nothing else really to do other than run the intro. Fantastic work is from Rick at How Many Triangles. There is a link to his Twitter and his website in the comment section below. Please go and check him out. He does fantastic work. He did a phenomenal job for us last year with our hashtag United Save, and he's gone above and beyond again this season for our Isle of Man series. So please go and support him as much as humanly possible. There are a whole bunch of different people to thank for this year's collaborations, but before we get ahead of that, let's get the game started. Let's get into it, and let's thank people as we go through various different things in this episode. So here we are, the very first person, probably the person that's put the most work into getting this series up and running is Steve, the FM editor. His link is also down in the description below. Chances are, if you like any YouTube football manager content, you've come across his work before because everyone uses his fantastic English level 10 database, which goes all the way down to the 10th level of England. He also does transfer updates throughout the course of the season, special databases relating to specific years in football. Like I think he did a great 03, 04, 05, 06 database last year, which was fantastic. He did all the phenomenal work to get our hashtag United series up and running last year, and he's done it again this year for the Isle of Man save as well, and helped me out a little bit extra to try and get FC Isle of Man into the game 12 months ahead of schedule. If you've seen other lower league saves like Dr. Benji's Tem series, Lelujo's home series, they were all within this database as well. It's the highest quality one I think that is out there. It's always tested. It always works fantastically well. I've never had a single issue with any database that he's put forward. So please go and check him out. Give him a follow. Give him your support because he massively deserves it. And very little else to do other than get the series started. It's English level 10 and above. So all the way from the bottom to the top, that's what we're going to try and work our way into. And then eventually into the Champions League and hopefully hopefully winning that before the series comes to an end. We are, of course, the ones behind my head that you can't see. We're not going to use real fixtures. We're not going to add key staff. We're going to bring in our own people. We have disabled player attribute masking. I've gone through a couple of times while I do that. I just don't necessarily think it's super necessary. You, If you scout someone three times, you find out what all their attributes are anyway. I just kind of tend to save the time by disabling it. You can look at them immediately, not have to worry about the scouting portion, and it just kind of breaks a little bit of the monotony of a lower league game and a lower league competition. So I've disabled that one, and I've, of course, uh, prevented use of the in-game editor because half your struggles are what make your series on YouTube so good. And there's a few people that probably could be told that lesson or learn that lesson themselves, but that's why we've ticked that particular box there. We're just loading England to start with. As we get further up the divisions, we'll add more nations in from around the world, try and get out that South American regions, try and get all those players that we want to try and bring in. But for the time being, we're just going to focus on English for the database itself. All right, now this handsome gentleman you guys haven't met before, we are going to edit the profile just a little bit. We're going to change up some stuff. We're going to leave all this in place, but I'm going to make my favorite team. It won't let me select FC Isle of Man, so we'll see. There we go. At that time, it's worked. We're going to leave the horrific burn victim together because we know we'll change our little space. But the next person that we have to thank, if we look at these fantastic kits that you see up here, the home kit, the away kit, and then that phenomenal looking black third kit. I have already shared these before on uh, Twitter and they have been shared on his account as well. But a huge thanks to request a kit for the work he's done pulling these together and getting them ready to be uploaded into the game. Again, link in the description of his account. He basically takes any request for any different type of kit, any rework, any artistic art interpretation of a kit, and he will create his own version of it. Go and check out his account. Go and give him a follow on Twitter. He does phenomenal work. It's of an incredibly high quality. And again, he did great work for us last year with the hashtag United Save. He's doing it again for Isle of Man. Very much appreciated and a huge thank you to him as well. Now, quick rundown of the club because there's that little fact sheet here. Uh, it's an amateur club. There are no semi-professional contracts as yet. There are a couple of other semi-professional teams in the division. The hope is that if we can get promoted, we might move to that status relatively quickly, but it'll all be about like our finance and how we perform and all that sort of stuff. The nickname, I've just gone with the man for Isle of Man. I couldn't really think of anything else. There is the Triskelion, which is the logo of the Isle of Man itself. It does work its way into a couple of different things here. The sponsor logo, which we'll look at closer in a little bit, and the logo on the crest as well. But instead, we've gone the man. I just like the way it sounded. I think it was cool. If you have better ideas, chuck them in the comment section below. I think I can change that throughout the course of the game. Stadium is the bowl. Uh, it is also known as the King George the Fifth Bowl. We've just gone with the bowl for short. It has a capacity at the moment of 3,000. I don't expect us to fill that anytime soon. We've got poor training facilities. 
no data analysis facilities and poor youth facilities. So we really are starting at the rock bottom of football in this division, in this league, in England itself. And we're going to slowly work our way up. So if we do get to a point where we have good training facilities, have good youth facilities, it'll be because the board has supported us and helped us get them. Now, this is the part that we're going to mix up. We're going to go to no coaching badges. We're going to go to Sunday League Football. We're going to start all the way from the start, which means we're going to have a tough time early days managing a fair chunk of the squad because they're not going to listen to me and I'm not going to have that experience behind me from a playing perspective for them to listen. So we are going to really be starting at the bottom of the pack. We're going to add an extra one to fitness just to try and help a little bit in terms of our coaching but because we are on amateur contracts a lot of the coaches will be able to bring in on no deals so like they can come in do their weeks training and then hopefully clear out after that and here we go fc isle of man higher in the mixer they've confirmed the appointment of sean in the mixer as the club's new manager eyebrows have been raised in the football world at the appointment of the 30 year old who has recently spent time away from club football but he's sure to face plenty of questions when he faces the media for the first time at the bowl so interestingly there it hasn't come up that they've said virtual unknown it might be that my current experience is equal to that of the reputation for fc isle of man at the start of the game this horrible burn victim face we will get rid of in a moment but in the mix is put to a pen to paper on a month-to-month deal worth not applicable i'm not getting paid at all it's an amateur contract so in reality i could really leave at any point and there aren't going to be massive concerns about uh you know how the team's performing and how we're going to do for them to actually cut my contract so a whole bunch of different layers of difficulty attached with this particular series but we're going to keep going as much as we can Reputation, you can see half a star, so really at the bottom of football. We've predicted finish 20th in the division, but I think that's just based on the club reputation rather than a reflection of the playing group that we'll eventually put together. You can see here the bowl has 3,000 capacity built in 1900. That's probably an incorrect statement on my part. But as we already said, poor training facilities, poor youth facilities, limited youth recruitment. It'll be a miracle if we get anyone coming through our youth academy in the next few years. And the big one, this last sentence here, with no real competition history of note, the man are a club with a trophy cabinet waiting to be fulfilled, and that will be my task as we move forward. They've got no players at the moment, so nobody in the team report. We're going to have to go through the transfer market and find some gems. The club culture, sign players under the age of 23 for the first team, which is fantastic. I'm definitely going to try and work towards that. And then for the end of the current season, we just have to try and be competitive in Northwest Division 1 North, which is where we're going to be playing, and be competitive in the build base FAVs. No expectations about how far we're going to get in those competitions. But realistically, at this lower level of football, we should be able to put together a decent run of form and hopefully get a little bit further in both those competitions than the current board request. All right, further news here, the first thing we're going to do is go and sort out that horrific face because I couldn't stare at it for that long. There we go, nice and easy. It matches the format of the rest of the ones that we're going to see throughout the course of this series. Taxi introduction, I'm not going to worry about now, but we will go and accept the club vision and expectations for the series ahead. And it gives us a good marker for this season and hopefully we continue to build on that over time. And as we get better and better, those expectations will start to move higher and higher throughout the divisions. Now, I did already mention it. We've got a ton of work to do in terms of our squad. We've got to bring players in that, one, aren't going to cost us anything, are willing to sign amateur contracts, and are also willing to relocate to the Isle of Man for no pay, which is probably going to be the biggest, toughest element. So maybe potentially we will have to look at a couple of these players and see if we can bring them in. We also have to do the same thing with our staff. We've got nobody attached to the club except for Gary Waitman, who is the current chairman of the FC Isle of Man bid. Paul Jones is in the game as well. I'm trying to bring him across to be a staff member as well. We'll hopefully see how that goes in the next few weeks. But I will have to bring in my own staff to assist in our training and all that sort of stuff. And we, of course, have to get through our pre-season schedule. I'm probably going to cancel out the majority of the friendlies that you can see here. We're just going to look to play local opposition at home, get them to travel to us, and hopefully belt the living piss out of them to raise morale as much as possible before the season starts. But what I'm thinking is, magic of editing, we're going to jump forward to the end of pre-season, this first game of the league year against St. Helens here. We're going to go through the tactic that we've worked on throughout pre-season. We're going to go through our pre-season results, introduce you to the squad, introduce you to any coaches that we've brought in, and hopefully get our season underway and to a good start against St. Helens. I don't want to fire through too many times throughout the course of the series without you guys seeing it. I want to get as much football as humanly possible in each episode. But in reality, we do need to start like kind of moving in a decent clip to get through these lower divisions as quickly as possible. So don't expect every episode to see me jump ahead a tremendous amount of time. But just in this one instance, through the magic of editing, we're going to jump forward to the end of preseason now. All right, and just like that, we are about a month ahead. It has gone pretty well so far, but first we should probably get it stuck in and introduce you to the squad first. We have managed to pull together a really tidy looking outfit here. Everybody's under the age of 20, oldest player is currently 20, youngest is 18. 
All of them have massively high potential, which is really what I want to focus on throughout the course of this series. I'm a bit of a wonder kid enthusiast. I love having them. We're not going to have them for a very long time until we get through to the Premier League level, but I do love trying to bring in young players that are of that status and see them develop into the world's best. And we're going to try and develop quite a few of these players into the division's best. But I'll do a quick run through. Uh, Bobby Biddle is who we've brought in to be our first choice goalkeeper. He will play most of the games he's available. He's an ex West Bromwich Albion junior player, has played at a lower league level as well, was willing to drop down, willing to sign an amateur contract, thrilled to have him. He's been decent so far in preseason, but not setting the world alight. Mohamed Diallo will be the first year captain for FC Isle of Man. Ex Arsenal junior, ex Stoke junior, now 19 years of age and without a club. Excellent physical attributes. Mental attributes are okay. Nothing to write home about. Technical attributes do need a little bit of work, but I think he can get up and down that sideline relatively well. And at this level, athleticism can actually get you quite a fair distance. On the other flank, it'll be Kieran Applin, ex-Newcastle Jr. comes across, still stays in the north of England. No idea what any of these players' living arrangements is, given that they're not being paid to currently play. But again, good physical attributes, good determination as well. Hopefully, we'll see him make the most of his five-star potential ability. Needs some work in technical areas, but that's going to be an ongoing theme for a lot of the players that we're going to look at here. And hopefully, he'll do a decent job for us as well. A central defensive partnership, Yannick Azia-Konu, also an ex-Newcastle Jr., looks to be an absolute beast in quite a few different areas, 14 marking, 14 tackling, probably one of the most technically proficient players we have in that back line, four-star current ability, five-star potential. Does have a little bit of a concern relating his physical state, but we'll have a look at what we're actually going to use him in in a moment. And then Nathan Baxter will play alongside him, a uh, Dutch youth international, I think. I oh, know no youth caps as yet, but previously played at Vitesse in Holland and then at Everton up until 2018. He didn't play at all in the 2019 year and now joins FC Isle of Man. Good technical attributes, good mental attributes, good physical attributes, definitely a star defender, four-star current ability, five-star potential. That partnership, we'll go through our tactic in a minute, but they're going to work in tandem quite well. One's going to cover the deficiencies of the other and the other will cover the portions the other one isn't as good at, but we'll talk about those in a moment. In midfield, Milo Hall will play as one of our central midfielders, but again, we'll go through the tactic in a minute. Another ex-West Bromwich junior didn't play much of the 2019 year, but we've brought him across, has okay physical attributes, very decent mental attributes, 17 determination being the big one that stands out there, and good technical attributes for what we're asking him to do. And then alongside him, it's likely going to be Dahomey Raymond, ex-Huddersfield junior, very similar situation, has some physical attributes that will continue to develop, he's only 18, good mental stats and okay technical ability, good first touch, which is what we need from him. On the wings, which are going to be two crucial areas, Simeon Ure, a French youth player uh, from Sheffield United. Good pace, good crossing, probably one of the better technical players that we've got. Four-star current ability, five-star potential, nothing to complain about with him there. Uh, on the other wing, we've got Debert Masamba, an ex Warsaw player. Can play on either wing, which is great for us to have. Again, good physical attributes, good mental attributes. Does need some work physically, but we'll give him time and continue to bring him through. Up top, we're going with Charlie Ball, another ex-Everton junior Straight up poacher. We just need him to do the fox in the box. He's got all right, decent technical attributes, good mental attributes, good physical attributes. The one that's concerning me is his eight finishing, but we've got a couple other players that we could potentially put in that role that would also do quite well. And then alongside him, a guy that's been tearing it up in preseason, Joe Thompson, an ex crew Alexandra junior, three star current ability, five star potential, excellent physical traits, only acceleration below a 10 rating, good mental attributes, also decent determination at 10. And then some of his technical stuff we're going to continue working on throughout the course of the season including getting him on a specialist training regime for his finishing i won't go through the entire squad the reason that i'm not going to go through everybody right now i'll introduce you to them as the season goes on is because we've already lost two players in pre-season to higher division clubs that could offer part-time contracts um, so don't get too stuck on these people there's a whole big long list of players that we can go in and get and basically all i'm doing is going to the position that we need like goalkeeper here searching for players that have an expired contract, searching for an age maximum of 19, and then just having a look at the key attributes for that particular role and just reducing it down to who's actually available. So five out of 13 key attributes, Sam Naylor and Curtis Hall are two that are available. That's how we managed to get Bobby Biddle. That's how we managed to get our backup goalkeeper. We'll continue doing that throughout the course of the season as we lose players to teams that can offer semi-professional contracts. But Let's jump in and have a look at the tactic. You've kind of already guessed it. It's a very, very attacking 4-2-4. It started out as a 4-4-2 with the two uh, midfield players in the wide areas dropping back. But then we got Ure and we got Masamba and they're both suited to playing a little bit further forward up the pitch. So we're going to start with that. We've got them both working on individual training regimes to get a little bit better at playing deeper. 
Uh, we've got three different tactical setups. This first one that we're looking at is our positive structure, which we use for the majority of our games. In possession, just three instructions. In transition, three instructions. Out of possession, three instructions. I'm not looking to do anything too complicated or reinvent the wheel or anything. Keep your football as simple as possible in the lower levels until we get further up, until we get better players, until we get players that can execute a little bit more and then start adding in additional tasks and additional things that you want them to do. We've also got a cautious mentality set up next to that, which does drop the fullbacks back, which does drop the wing back as well a couple of more support and defend instructions in this structure as well and then an attacking one which is basically like our all-out attack where we go very direct we play with a high tempo we play wide and we fly our defensive line further up the pitch to try and force a winner if we can all three of them in use throughout preseason all three of them with varying degrees of success as well it has gone pretty well so far nothing to complain about Working good partnerships between Baxter and Azzy Connor. We did speak about at the start, Azzy Connor physically isn't that good. He's going to play as the stopper because he's gigantic. I think he's like 200 centimetres tall or something crazy. Or 194, so close enough. He's a big lad. He will play a little bit further forward. And Baxter, as a bit more of an agile player, but not as strong, uh, will anchor in behind and sweep up anything that goes over his head. They're going to work in tandem. The Raymond and Hall tandem has been working quite well in midfield, and Thompson and Ball have been our best two performers in preseason. You can see here Thompson on a 9.08 match rating is probably the best performer we've had. Don't look at Ure. He's been injured most of preseason. His 9.4 rating is kind of a misnomer. It doesn't really reflect how the team has played. But speaking of the schedule, we've been basically beating teams with similar reputations to us uh, we did have a 5-2 win against Pilkington pay no mind to any of these names these were computer generated players at the start of the game I just wanted to get us in that Wednesday Saturday rhythm to start the season same with East Villa we only had a couple of actual players Connor Russo being one of them that played in this game still a 3-3 draw nothing to get too upset about we're finding the back of the net regularly and then since then since we've had pretty much a full choice lineup to pick from uh, we've been smashing teams 6-1 7-0 5-0 8-0 10-2 6-0 uh, everything have been going quite well and that's of course using all of our tactical structures we used I think the positive one for our first four we had to go at cautious for the next two and then we had to go at the attacking mentality for these 10-2 and 6-0 wins just to build up our familiarity to a decent level before we start the season and just to make sure that we're comfortable in each of our structures as the season goes on. But more than enough talking for me. Oh, actually, no, I nearly forgot staff as well. We brought in a shitload of staff. Um, we brought in Harry Hepworth, who is absolute garbage, to be completely honest with you. But he's come in as an assistant because he was the only person I could find that was willing to do it. He's got a whole bunch of different licenses that he'll be able to go out and get that will hopefully improve his coaching ability. And then I handed basically the staff responsibilities over to our chairman Gary Waitman for him to bring in different staff members throughout the course of preseason. He's brought in a couple of coaches, a head physio, a physio, scouts, data analysts, and then managers for the youth teams as well, which is a massive help just because it saves me having to go through. I think to find our assistant manager, I had to go through and just basically reduce one at a time the different date ranges that we were happy to look at for you know physio attributes and then work through and see who has the actual best the tribute and was willing to come and work our way down from there. So it's been a bit of a tough slog getting some of these players across, getting some of these staff members across, but now we're set up. I think we're on a good platform to go ahead and have a good season. Speaking of, when we look at the Hallmark Security League North 1 Division 1 North, that is a mouthful. Season preview, we have moved from being the worst team in the division to being the best team. We are now favoured to win the division based on the players that we've brought in. We've got 10 out of the 11 players in the Media Dream 11, which is great. We've got a whole bunch of extra players as well that are in there on the bench and whatever else. The only player we're missing is Pascal Chimbonda, now 40 years of age, playing at Ashton Town. We can't bring him in. I have been trying, but he's on a part-time deal with them, and we unfortunately can't compete with it. And if we jump in trying to sign him, he doesn't want to come across. So fair enough. We'll keep an eye on that, but it does kind of point to Ashton Town being one of the better teams in this division, even though perhaps they aren't as favored by the odds makers at the start of the season. More than enough talking from me, let's jump forward and have a look at the two lineups that we're going to go with. So only one change to that 11 that I just went through with you earlier. Ure does have a knock. I don't want to force him too early and have him be injured or have him struggling for fitness. So we're not going to rush him. We're going to bring in Connor Russo on that right-hand side, an ex-Stoke junior who's not terrible, decent physical attributes, not as good technically as Ure is, but good determination, good flair, good leadership, good aggression for a right midfield player. Only 19 years of age as well, so he will have time to continue to develop and make the most of his potential. They're playing a 4-3-3 shape. We've played a couple of different 4-3-3s throughout preseason. We've always done 
going very well, but in reality, I really want to get this off to a good start and assertively tell everyone, go out there and enjoy yourselves today. No one seems to care, so let's just tell them we have faith. We want to get a win to start the series. We want to get a win to close out episode one and the tremendous amount of stuff that we've gone through. It might have only been a couple of minutes for you guys, but I've been playing for a good few hours to make sure we've got everything right. And I've just noticed as well, we're playing in our very handsome black kit in our first game of the season and of the series so far. We've won the ball back in a good area. Ball's gotten in behind with a long ball forward from Raymond and he finds the finish. Charlie Ball, 26 seconds into our first game of the season. It is a wonderful, wonderful finish. And maybe, just maybe, we've put together a squad that is going to do very well this season. I love those bumblebee stripe socks that we've got going on here. But Ball, excellent little touch, gets it around the keeper and then smacks that one home. Keeper maybe could have come out, done a little bit better, but we're definitely going to be dangerous for teams trying to hold a high defensive line. We've got a highlight again here, Applin with the ball forward, or Alpin, sorry. It's into midfield, Hall wins it back well. Raymond will tidy up to Alpin, forward to Thompson. Swift recovers on halfway, out wide now to Britain. He's got an overlapping runner in Hanson on the right wing, back inside to Moore. Plays across to Wallace. Someone needs to step to him. Ball in behind. Diallo should tidy up without any issues. Long ball forward towards Russo. We've got a 4v2 if we work the right passes here. He's gotten into a wide area. And that old problem with Football Manager 2020, wingers shooting from wide areas. Potentially, if that continues, we'll try and drop them back a little bit and play them on support just so that they look for the pass. Baxter recovers the ball very well in midfield. Plays it forward to Ball again, who's gotten in behind. Derby with a good save this time. And Swift hacks the ball away. Throw-in routine here. We have set up our throw-in routines. I will go through them in a future episode. But ball across from Applin. Finds Russo at the back stick. And he came in for the injured Uro and gets his first goal for the season and the second goal for the club in competitive fixtures. It's a wonderful worked corner routine here. Just a short one from Applin. Gets it straight back from Masamba. And then he hangs it up back stick. And it's a good finish from Russo on his left peg on the volley back across the goalkeeper and puts us 2-0 up against St. Helens in the first game of the season. And there's an immediate highlight here from kickoff. The ball starts with St. Helens. They played it forward to Sadler. Diallo with a good tackle, but it falls to Casey. Hall recovers in a good spot. Diallo with a crossfield switch towards Misamba. Can he cut in and find the finish on his favoured right foot? It's a good save from Derby. Ball recovers, but then Platt hooks the ball away. All right, we get through to half time, and we are well and truly on top here. 15 shots, 9 on target, 54% of the ball. Despite playing a relatively direct style, we're not looking to retain possession or anything. Assertively, we're just going to stay very happy with the way things are going. We're going to try and keep morale up as much as humanly possible in the early part of the season. And as we always do, we'll give it 15 more minutes before we have a look at subs. We've got a couple of knocks, a couple of players struggling for fitness in the early part of the season, and we do need to manage that stuff as the year goes on. All right, two subs we're going to make really quickly. We're going to bring off Azir Konu and bring on Sam Greenwood, who is an ex... Where is he from? Ex-Nottingham Forest junior, uh, just because Azir Konu is still working his fitness up. And we're going to bring on Ben Mills as well for... The goal scorer ball because uh, he's struggling with a little bit of a knock as well. But a good Huddersfield junior from back in the day. Um, good finishing, probably the best finishing in the squad. Good first touch. Physical attributes do need a little bit of work. One jumping reach and one strength do stand out at you, but he does look like he has some high potential to take up to the next level. And then given that we're through about an hour, or by the time it comes out, 75 minutes, we're going to use our Get Creative Shout and hopefully turn it on a little bit for the last few minutes. We might also go attacking for the last 10, try and boost our goal difference and get ourselves on top of the league. Derby with a long ball forward here. Hall brings it down in midfield very well, plays it in behind towards Russo, takes an excellent touch around the defender, tries to get the strike away, but nothing doing. Ball forward, Diallo could have tidied up, but instead he lets it run for the throw. Platt with a deep ball now into Casey, all the way back to Derby and goal. Long ball forward into midfield, backs to Kane for it, but he's been caught, goal side. Overlapping run from Britain on the right-hand side here, gets the strike away, hits the base of the post, and then Applin gets it away. Throw in here for St. Helens. Hanson with the ball, deep one across. Diallo lets it run. Casey at the back stick. Nearly recovered by Russo. Baxter with the header away. Only as far as Scott at the top of the box. Platt back to Scott. All the way back to Moore. The pressing is good in midfield there, sending him backwards. Now wide with Casey on the left-hand side. Diallo makes a challenge, but it falls to Scott. Hall hacks the ball away up the line for Mills. He's got men around him. Instead, he turns his man brilliantly in a wide position. Can he square it up? Instead, he goes for the strike himself. Hits the crossbar. Masamba might follow up here. He's caught a yellow card. And Moore scrambles the ball away to bring the highlight to an end. Really end to end stuff here at the moment. Russo with a deep ball across towards Greenwood back stick, but it overruns everyone. Greenwood tries to bring it back in, but Moore recovers in midfield. Someone's going to have to step to him in this wide position. We've got runners through the middle as well. We might be a little bit more open once we go to this attacking mentality, given the amount of highlights they've had late. 
Bogey with the ball. Diallo with a good tackle. Long ball forward towards Mills again. Good flick on towards Thompson. Overlapping run from Asal, but he is right-footed naturally. Can he find the finish? It's just straight at the keeper, and Derby pushes it out for a corner. Any late drama from the corner to be had. Hall to take. We should take this short if we follow our routine. Masamba back to Hall. Greenwood back stick. Gets the header in, but the referee calls for the offside in that wide area. Swift takes a long ball forward. Baxter with a good header. Raymond nearly brings it down, but Greenwood tidies up. Out wide to Masamba, who cuts inside. He's gotten around his man. Can he find the finish? Might have wanted to square that one up. He did have Mills hanging around in the center of the box, but a lot of chances once we go to our attacking structure for both sides. And the game ends 2-0. A good win for our first time out. I'm not going to complain about it. 29 shots, 14 on target, and 55% possession. They've had 7, 2, and 45%. Mohamed Diallo had an excellent game. We're just going to tell everyone, well done, lads. A good win for us. No need to complicate things any further than that. And it does see us go top of the division, though Goldcard United and Lower Breck also had 2 nil wins in their matches to start the season. Hopefully, it's a position we can continue to hold throughout the course of the year. FC Old Man Hammer St. Helens Diallo gets the Man of the Match award, so I think we're going to go and tell him that he did very, very well. Charlie Bell scores on his debut, and it's the very first goal for FC Isle of Man. History has definitely been made. Charlie Ball also picked up an, a knock, a gashed lower leg, but he'll be fine and back in a few days. Now, we've gone through a tremendous amount of information. I don't want to bombard everyone too early by doing a second game in this episode, but what we do want to try and do is bring you pretty much games in each episode month of the season so i think what we're going to do is we're going to jump forward a little bit and we're going to come back and do the games in september against ashton town and afc blackpool both are teams that i think are going to do quite well We're against pascal trimbonders af ashton town and then afc blackpool you can see they're in fourth spot they are one of the biggest teams in the division and it might be a huge game to decide how the season has gone on if you are new to the channel and haven't checked out our previous series we've done a whole bunch of different content throughout the last 12 to 18 months um, if you didn't watch our hashtag united series you'll know that when we started in division 10 we got four back to back to back to back to back promotions i don't think that's going to happen this time i don't think we're going to have the same ability to pull players in within london and get like ex-Tottenham, ex-Chelsea, ex-Arsenal juniors to come across to the club as early as we can. Because they've got to move out to an island, I think it will be a bit of a battle to try and get players across as we move up the divisions. But if we can get off to a good start, if we can win this first division, boost our reputation a little bit, boost my reputation as a manager, I think we're in it for an absolute stellar series. And lower league management is always my favorite portion. Now, if you haven't already, you can subscribe to the channel to be kept up to date on all future videos. If you just look over to that side, and I've nailed it, I've gotten it right the first time of asking, I always get it wrong. You can subscribe to the channel to be kept up to date when next episodes are released. We're also going to do a couple of short-term saves throughout the course of the year. Uh, we've done a couple with Manchester United with AC Milan already, one season wonders. We're going to continue those throughout the course of the year. So if there's any that you want to see, let me know in the comment section of those videos. Drop a like on this video to help me celebrate the first episode of the series. Check us out over on Twitter to see all our interactions with the community and if you want to reach out directly there's also some great interactions with fc isle of man as a club as well keep an eye out for our sunday night streams over on twitch twitch.tv slash in the mixer underscore fm but more than anything thank you so much for watching that's the part that means the most to me i've been sean and i'll see you all again in the mixer